Warning. The following material contains fear-mongering, wild speculation, opinions, scientific and non-scientific guesswork, circumstantial evidence, religious indoctrination, pseudoscience, paradigm-changing and consciousness-altering material, and may cause emotional triggers, unhappiness, erectile dysfunction, suicidal thoughts, lethargy, or societal disconnect for emotional safe space needing snowflakes. Parental guidance is suggested. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, and pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Mainstream social sciences put our current world population at roughly 7,739,000,000 people. When using the United Nations conservative world average of 1.1% annual population growth and plugging that into the world population doubling rate formula, which is 70 divided by 1.1% annual growth, we get the world population doubling roughly every 63 years. When we apply this going back in time, it means that to reach the current population rate, there were only roughly 18 people alive around the year 2 AD. The 1582 Gregorian calendar was forced upon every culture on earth at the penalty of death, putting the reset of our accepted timelines at exactly this time, from BC to AD. Sold as the alleged death of Jesus, the Son and Son of Man, two years off from the time when only 18 people should have been alive to bring us to our current population growth number. Could it be that BC actually stands for before cataclysm and AD actually means after destruction or after deluge? We're told that monks were secluded in monasteries on solid bedrock, making beer and copying important historical scrolls. Or were they really up there fabricating our history? While in the one breath we are taught the idea that man is ever evolving into a higher and better being each generation, in the same breath, we are taught the descendants of the people who built art and structures like this thousands of years ago. Right around the same time our population calculations and Gregorian calendar reset history inexplicably evolved into this. Exactly. So, logically, if she weighs the same as a duck, 
she's made of wood, and therefore... A witch! A The Dark Ages were blamed on religious oppression, and as usual, two diametrically opposing stories run together. Wicatardia claims the original Vatican was built in 498 AD, next to St. Peter's Basilica, constructed in 326 AD. Not bad handiwork for the Dark Ages. But they also claim the exact same church was actually built after the Dark Ages. So this structure was either built by 4th century Dark Age morons or Dark Age morons suddenly had the genius and experience to build structures like this in the 16th century? With these tools? Cool story, bro. Lamestream science believes there was a civilization-ending catastrophe 84,000 years ago. As the astrological age of Taurus the Bull transitioned into the age of Aries, the Ram or Lamb of God. The last time this age transition happened, we're told Moses and his posse took to the high ground to avoid a cataclysmic tidal wave. Then all wandered around lost in the aftermath for 40 years. Still worshipping the constellation Taurus, the bull, and building idols of the wrong astrological age. Lord. I shall give these laws unto thy people. Hear me, all oh, hear me, all oh, pay heed. The Lord, the Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15, wait, 10, 10 commandments for all to obey. As we transition from the age of Aries into the age of Pisces, the fish, we find the same thing as Moses. Now Jesus comes along with new commandments on how society should behave and grow. Jesus literally means fish, the last astrological age of Pisces. The Piscean fish has been the esoteric symbol for over 2,000 years for the Son of Man. And now as we transition from the age of Pisces the fish into Aquarius the water bearer, Like Moses and Jesus, we get the Rosicrucians erecting the Georgia Guidestones, rules on rebuilding society after a cataclysmic reset. Dar Mountain is the highest peak in Iraq, Babylon, 11,834 feet. Popular artwork and a biblical mistranslation has duped many a Christian and even flat earther into believing the Babylonians attempted to build a structure with a top that reached unto heaven, trying to touch the dome or firmament. The UN Tower of Sheeple Intelligent enough to design and build a 2,400 mile high building, but too stupid to start it at the top of a 12,000 foot mountain? Beers Nimrod, five miles southwest of Hila, Iraq. 
The actual Tower of Babel was discovered by Lieutenant General Chesney, five miles southwest of Hila, Iraq. It stood 153 feet above the plain from a base covering 400 feet. Known as the Seven Spheres or Seven Lights, it was constructed of kiln-dried bricks in seven stages to correspond with the seven wandering stars or planets. The lowermost black for Saturn, then orange for Jupiter, red for Mars, etc. The top did not reach under the heavens, but rather had a representation of the heavens. Two planispheres describing the whole of the prediction of the stars in the zodiac upon them. One of brick and the other of stone. so that the revelations of their prophet Enoch might not be lost in the two coming judgments of water and fire. The etymology of the word cardinal means principal, chief, boss, essential, pertaining to a hinge, that on which something turns or depends, the pole of the sky. In modern Western astrology, the four important cardinal points are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Can you solve the riddle of the Sphinx? Why, yes we can, easily now. We can see in the ceiling of the portico of the Egyptian temple of Esna, before Moses, that Enochian Babylonian Egyptian astrology started not at Aries, but after Leo, at Virgo, between the lion and the virgin. Leo the Lion, Virgo the Virgin. This ancient Eastern astrology puts important cardinal points between Leo and Virgo. Taurus and Aries, the time of Moses. Scorpio and Sagittarius. And presently, Pisces and Aquarius. There he is, pouring water down upon the age of Pisces, the fish. He's called Hupe Tyrion, the place of him coming down or poured forth. His Hebrew and Arabic names Delhi or Delu come from ancient Hindi, Delhi, the water bucket, where we get our modern flood term deluge from. The star in the right shoulder is called Sa'ad al-Malik, which means the record of the pouring forth. The star in the other shoulder is called Sa'ad al-Sun, who goeth and returneth, or the pourer out.
The legendarian Fraser uncovered over 8,000 separate flood legends from the Malaysian Peninsula region. The 1587 Monte map shows an enormous island in that region called Palaon, just east of Cambodia and the Philippines. Google Maps 2019 Underwater, same shape, just east of Cambodia and the Philippines. Palawan. Cartographers knew it intimately before the 1600s. 1528, Bordone. 1575, De Bella Forest. 1584, Ortelius. 1587, Mercator. 1589, Mafi Fi Fum. 1593, Dijode. <laughs> 1593, Munster. 1595, Antwerp. 1596, Magini. 1600, Busamaker. From then onwards, the maps all look like Google Maps today. The Philippines are there, but enormous Palau is nowhere to be found. 1628, Marion. Seventeen eighty seven Bowen All that remains of this Cambodia sized island we see underwater today is this tiny micro island of Palau and the island of Guam in the Mariana micro island chain. Here's a list of ancient fire gods. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. When the weapon Brahma Shirsha Astra is invoked, it blazes up with terrible flames within a huge sphere of fire. Numerous peals of thunder were heard, thousands of meteors fell, and all living creatures became terrified with great dread. The entire sky seemed to be filled with noise and assumed a terrible aspect with flames of fire, the whole earth with her mountains and waters and trees trembled. Various omens appeared among the gods. Winds blew, meteors fell in thousands, thunder rolled through a cloudless sky. Drona called Arjuna and said, Accept from this irresistible weapon called Brahmastra, but you must promise never to use it against a human foe. For if you did, it might destroy the world. At last they came to blows, 
and seizing their maces struck each other. They fell like falling suns. It was a single projectile, charged with all the power of the universe, an incandescent column of smoke and flame, as bright as a thousand suns, rose in all its splendor. It was an unknown weapon, an iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death, which reduced to ashes the entire race of the Vrishnas and the Andakas. These all will take place at the end of the Yuga, and when men become fierce and destitute of virtue, then does the Yuga come to an end. and the course of the winds will be confused and agitated, and innumerable meteors will flash through the sky, foreboding evil. And then the sun will appear with six others of the same kind. and all around will be din and uproar, and everywhere there will be conflagrations, and fires will blaze up on all sides when the end of the Yuga comes. At the close of the ages it hath been decreed, the world shall be purged with fire. The Mayan Calendar, 2012. Missed it by that much. Monan, without beginning or end, author of all that is, seeing the ingratitude of men and their contempt for him who had made them thus joyous, withdrew from them and sent upon them Tata, the divine fire which burned all that there was on the surface of the earth. Suat from the south comes with flickering flame. The sun darkens, earth in ocean sinks, fall from heaven the bright stars. Fire breath assails the all-nourishing tree, towering fire plays against heaven itself. Historian Daniel G. Brinton wrote that by far the greater number of South American tribes represent the last destruction of the world to have been by water. A few, however, attribute it to a general conflagration which swept over the whole earth, consuming every living thing except a few who took refuge in a deep cave. Hathor, Taurus, the cow goddess. Hathor went to earth and slew millions of humans the streets of the town of Shed Newton began to run like a river with blood because of her horrific endeavor. So much blood drained into the Nile that it overflowed the riverbanks and the bloody water flooded the land, destroying everything. This water eventually ran into the sea, which overflowed as well. Hathor began drinking this horrible mixture of blood and water. Ra was displeased with Hathor's work as he had only wanted to punish and not destroy the human race. So he asked Thoth, the wisest god, for help. 
He then told the goddess Sektet to mix together dada, fruit and barley to make beer. The beer was then to be mixed with human blood in the hopes that it would attract Hathor. Ra's servants were then ordered to pour out the mixture on the remaining land near Hathor. The beer became a great sea and Hathor was drawn to it by the smell of the blood. She drank the beer until she was so intoxicated that she staggered off to sleep, leaving the last few humans behind. From these humans, Earth was repopulated. Ra left the upkeep of Earth to Thoth from then on, and he went off to rest on the back of the great cow of heaven. Thoth taught humans how to be civilized. The Pleiades star cluster lies in the neck of Hathor, or Taurus, the bull constellation. NASA estimates the Pleiades to be 4,180 trillion miles away, 440 light years. Yet the master builders and astronomer Egyptians had this to say about what happened in the sky during the Great Flood. They claim the flood was produced by a union of the male waters, which are above the firmament, and the female waters issuing from the earth. The upper waters rushed through the space left when God removed two stars out of the constellation Pleiades. Obviously, the current Jesuit-taught cosmology cannot explain how two suns magically disappeared and teleported thousands of trillions of miles away, or how that could cause a worldwide flood from 4,000 trillion miles away from us, or where these waters above come from in space. Apparently God is going to magically teleport those two stars back to Ursa Major the Bear after Earth gets our new world. There were other changes among the celestial spheres during the year of the Flood. All the time it lasted, the sun and the moon shed no light. All cultures on Earth describe the sun and the moon going dark for three days to a year during these cataclysms. The suggestion that the Earth stops spinning doesn't hold water, as half the cultures on Earth would report seeing only sunlight for three days to a year, if they were facing the sun when it stops spinning, yet no such story exists. So that kicks that theory to the floor. A more plausible mainstream theory is that major VE7 volcanic eruptions during these resets blanket the sky for three days to a year, so the sun and moon simply can't be seen. But this theory too cannot account for the many stories that Venus, Saturn and Mars became the lights of day and night during these sun and moon blackouts. How did they see them? The ancient Hopi prophecy of the returning blue and red stars, or comets, describes a similar phenomenon in the time of the reset and has a chillingly accurate description of the end time society which exactly mirrors our world today. When the blue star Kachina makes its appearance in the heavens, the fifth world will emerge. This will be the day of purification it will come when Kachina dances in the plaza, or the plasma, and removes her mask. In the final days, when we look up into the northwestern skies, we will see the return of the two brothers who helped create this world. The return of the blue Kachina will be the alarm clock to tell us of the new day and the new world that is coming. That is where the changes will begin which will start as fires that burn within us. Could this be the truther movement and great awakening we are witnessing now? Not far behind will come the red Kachina, the purifier, like Aquarius. 
issuing forth a great red light and bringing the days of purification. On this day, the earth, her creatures, and all life as we know it will change forever. Only those who return to the way of living in nature will survive in and build the new world. I guess the jobs, cash, and grocery stores will be gone and closed after the reset. Many will appear to have lost their souls in these final days. So intense will the nature of the changes be that those who are weak in spiritual awareness will go insane. It will be years of hard times for women with children, for they will be shunned. There will be those who walk as ghosts through the cities, through canyons they have constructed in their man-made mountains. Those that walk through these places will be very heavy in their walk. It will appear almost painful as they will be disconnected from their spirit and the earth. There will be confusion between sexes and children and their elders. Others will have great deformities both in the mind and upon their bodies. Life will get very perverted and there will be little social order in these times. When the purifier comes, we will see him first as a small red star. Then one morning, we will awaken to the red dawn. The sky will be the color of blood and no living thing will go untouched. Here, or in the heavens. This is a process that shaped canyon land. To fully understand these canyons, however, first we must understand domes, because the canyons are carved from a dome. The entire Colorado Plateau is a dome, or rather a series of domes overlaying each other. The domes are composed of sedimentary layers of limestone and sandstone. The layers are stacked, for the most part, evenly and flat, like a layer cake. The basic layer cake structure is capped with the Rocky Mountains on the east and carved into canyons on the west, while it's shot through with the Lichtenberg pattern, vertically cut gorges of the Colorado and Green Rivers. The dome structure of the plateau and the canyons carved through it is primarily the result of natural sputtering discharge process created during an intense electrical storm when Earth's electric field was amplified to the point the entire atmosphere was ionized. Imagine the atmosphere stirred into a maelstrom lit with streamers of glowing plasma where lightning crackled not only in the sky but across the land and mountaintops glowed with coronal fire under swirling clouds of dusky plasma. It would have been surreal, a place where streams of wind became electric currents, where high and low pressure zones acted like battery terminals, and mountaintops became electrodes drawing machine gun lightning from the sky. Anything standing in the wind would have hissed and snapped with coronal fire. Dust in the air would have acted strange, too, as the energy of free electrons collided and overpowered weaker atomic bonds, ionizing matter, causing it to act like a ferrofluid under the influence of a magnet. Ionic species segregate, forming unipolar winds that tore past each other in opposite directions, creating shear zones of intense electrical discharge and vortex winds of supersonic speed. The inside of Earth would have been in turmoil as well hot magma spewing from volcanic vents, aquifers boiling, explosive eruptions of steam from deep underground, pocking the landscape with holes. Even arcs would erupt, lightning from the ground, caused by buried pockets of charge where minerals and water ionized. The winds, dust-laden and electric, 
deposited the Colorado Plateau, plating a cake across the western half of North America in the same way semiconductor manufacturers layer circuitry onto silica wafers. The stratified layers are interspersed with magma flows, petrified forests, inland seas, and dinosaur boneyards of different ages that indicate it formed in a series of events that likely recurred over millions of years. To create the canyon lands, the voltage potential had to reverse and eat away at landscape newly laid down by the storm. Under the electric field of an electrical storm, the surface of the earth becomes positively charged. It becomes the anode in the circuit where lightning strikes from the negative cloud base. Rain did not fall, but silica did, as dust in the air fell and adhered in layers to the dome. Inland seas are layers washed over by tsunami, generated by the storm itself, became covered over with more layers of dry overburden as the storm progressed. This left a moist layer like icing in the center of the layer cake. This icing layer then ionized under intense bombardment from sputtering discharge in the eye of the storm and created what is known as barrier discharge in the moist layer beneath the ground. Which brings us back to Arches National Monument, proof that canyons were carved by sputtering discharge, aided by barrier discharge, in a moist layer of the big cake. This image tells most of the story. A band of rock looks tortured and fluid, as if it were boiled mud when it solidified, sandwiched between smooth, more or less even layers of stone. The canyon floor is flat, which is surprising if one accepts the consensus view that canyons were made by water erosion. Water erosion leaves deep channels and V-cut valleys, not flat floors. And this closer image shows the fluidity of the layers. At the top, the overburdened rock barely sinks into the sagging layer beneath it that turned plastic because it was still solid. The plastic layer beneath sagged but didn't compress and maintained a consistent thickness. Below that, on the bottom, the boiled mud layer fluidized completely and squeezed like toothpaste. What turned this bottom layer fluid caused it to sag beneath a solid overburden was electric current a barrier discharge current. Are the seven trumpets of Revelations metaphors or literal? In the last decade, strange trumpet-like sounds from the sky have been reported worldwide. Flying angels and babies with trumpets can be found by the thousands all over artwork, maps, religions, books, and even in archetypes of human consciousness itself. A strange archetype, considering babies can't fly or play the trumpet without teeth. Could they actually represent a metaphorical reset of humanity back to its infantile state after the chaos that these sky trumpets seem to accompany? CIA spook Major Ed Dames drew a future world map of what he claimed would happen to the Earth after an upcoming pole shift, which he called the kill shot. He claimed remote viewing showed his team several new land masses that will rise up out of the sea during this event. Mm -hmm. 
Remarkably, these are the exact three land masses this entire film series has discussed the disappearance of from maps before the Maunder and Dalton Grand Solar Minimums. The island of Palau between Southeast Asia and South America. The island of Friesland off Greenland's southwest tip. Island of California, west of modern-day California, stretching up into Canada on the old maps. Coincidence? There are lies, there are damn lies, and then there is carbon dating. Even mainstream science has now admitted that carbon dating methods are off by as much as 3,500 years. Due to a plethora of variables and assumptive fallacies in the methodology. Missed it by that much. Our beloved sciences of stratigraphy, archaeology, radiology, anthropology, paleontology, and oceanography are backed up by wild, inaccurate carbon dating methods and Jesuit-taught cosmology assumptions, like this spinning space ball. Their theory is based on the works of Hannes Elfin, this dickhead with the weird Masonic thumb handshake. He invented MHD, Magnetohydrodynamic Energy. A bullshit combination of bullshit, bullshit, and bullshit. We'll get more into his bullshit theories in part 6C, which will be about how these resets happen on different cosmology models, and what to expect and where. But back to the carbon dating flaws and fallacy assumptions that make the mainstream version of when so unreliable. Lamestream sciences date the cataclysms as follows. 6,500 years ago, the Sumerian flood of Noah, Gilgamesh, Utnapishtim. 5,000 years before that, survivors Adam and his daughter Eve. Wife and mother Lilith didn't make it. 7,000 years before that, Osiris. Dr. Thomas Chan theorized that the duration pattern between cataclysms was now reversing since the Adam and Eve Sudan Basin event. 14,750, 10,500, 7,000, 4,550, then back to 7,000, putting the next cataclysm roughly 30 years from 1965, right about now, to 500 years from now. Scared ya. What's their evidence? The Bereskova mammoth frozen instantly in mud with food still in his mouth. The correlation of ice ages and quick extinctions the world over. The survival of primitive life in the Malay Peninsula and Galapagos. Coral reef on the floor of the Arctic Ocean. Enormous granite blocks moved from the Swiss Alps to the Jura Mountains 63 miles away, 4,000 feet above sea level. Over 8,000 flood survival legends just in the Malay Peninsula region. Quick extinction evidence from Australia's P. Jark Marsh. 
the prevalence of jade in the Orient, evidence of a once tropical population in Siberia and Alaska wiped out in a fraction of a day, evidence of a worldwide master root language known as Naga, and all of these other scientific evidences listed here. Moreover, I have seen the world arise and vanish, arise and vanish again, like a tortoise shell coming out of the infinite ocean and sinking back again. I was present at the dawn and the twilight of the cycles. O oh Solon, you Hellenes are but children. There is no old doctrine handed down among you by ancient tradition, nor any science which is hoary with age, and I will tell you the reason behind this. There have been, and will be again, many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes, the greatest having been brought about by earth, fire, and inundation. Whatever happened either in your country or ours, or in any other country of which we are informed, any action which is noble and great, or in any other way remarkable, which has taken place, all that has been inscribed long ago in our temple records, whereas you and other nations did not keep imperishable records. And then, after a period of time, the usual inundation visits like a pestilence and leaves only those of you who are destitute of letters and education. And thus you have to begin over again as children and know nothing of what happened in ancient times, either among us or among yourselves. As for those genealogies of yours which you have related to us, they are no better than tales of children, for in the first place you remember one deluge only, whereas there were a number of them, and in the next place there dwelt in your land, which you do not know, the fairest and noblest race of men that ever lived, of which you are but a seed or remnant. And this was not known to you because for many generations, survivors of that destruction made no record. It is plausible that the ancient texts about the Wigan Destroyer, Wormwood, Nemesis, Nibiru, and the Hopi Red Kachina are one and the same phenomenon. But are they in reality an electromagnetic atmospheric comet manifestation when the compression and decompression cycles and conditions in our realm are perfect for ionic electrical discharge and reorganization? In part 6c, we'll discuss how this can happen on several different Earth cosmology models. As to whether this happens every 400 or several thousand years, or when we can next expect it. No one knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father.